All right, please introduce yourself, state your name and DOC number for the record. Dwayne VZ8398765. All right, Dwayne, my name is Brennan Kelsey. Along with me is Ms. Tony Marabella. Ms. Pearl Wise will be your parole panel. We'll ask some questions. You can respond at the end of the next statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Yeah, wait for your information to pull up here. And also we have Ms. Jasmine Cole and Ms. Uh, Naya Johnson, is that right? Did I say it wrong? Nia? Nia. Nia, okay, sorry about that. It's Nia okay. Johnson. We'll, we'll get you uh, <coughs> wrap up here. We also, it looks like we have Andrew Hunley and we have Mr. Robert Lancaster. Robert BZA, DOC, oh, I'm sorry, Dwayne BZA, DOC number 398765, first class offender, probability date 2 17 2023, good, uh, good time date 12 7 2026, full term date 2 18 2033, five year sentence, attempted armed robbery. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. All right, would you answer, Mr. Maribel? Good morning, Mr. Busiat. How are you? I'm doing very good. Thank you, sir. Uh, I've got a few questions to ask you, Mr. Vizier. Are you 41 years old? Is that correct? Yes, sir. And you came to prison when you were 16? Yes, sir. So how long you been in? My math isn't that good. 24. February will make 25. So tell me about Dwayne Vizier at 16 years old. What was going on in your life? I was. Uh, I come from a broken home. Single mother trying to raise three kids. I was, uh, I, I describe myself as a follower, hanging around with the wrong crowd, doing just petty things and following the wrong people. I, I wasn't, uh, I couldn't think very well. I was making bad decisions. Were you drugs or alcohol involved? Were you drinking? Yes, doing sir. Drugs? Yes, sir. Kind of, when I did drink. you start? When did you start drinking? Talk about drinking first. When did you start drinking? Probably around 10, 11 years old. What were you drinking? Uh, anything I could grab, like the uh, family members leaving an ice chest or they, they weren't looking, we would drink it. How about drugs? Uh, marijuana at an early age, probably around the same time, 10, 11 years old. Move, and we, did you move beyond marijuana? Yes, sir. I experimented with cocaine, crack cocaine, LSD, uh, pills. Um, I would do, at that age, I would do whatever was available. Uh, February of 1998, were you doing drugs that day? Yes, sir. Drinking? Drinking, marijuana, and cocaine. So just tell me very briefly, what possessed you and your partner to go rob this death Uh, We overheard... We was at our friend's house and had a, a crowd of people there and they had some older guys. They was talking about robbing the place that they had a lot of money in there and that they had a successful day and they seen all the money they had in there. And that kind of caught our attention. We never did anything like this before. And we just started talking about it and we decided to do it. Now, you were originally sentenced uh, to life and 50 years, and all of that was vacated. Now you're doing 35 years. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's correct. So tell me who Dwayne Vizier is today. Well, today I'm a man of faith. I'm a leader. I'm responsible. I got skills as far as carpentry skills, welder. I'm let's, let's, go one, let's go one at a time. Tell all me right. a little bit. Out. Tell me a little bit about uh, some of the programs that you've taken and what do you think has been the most important thing that you've taken while you've been in prison? Well, Victim Impact was really good. It, uh, it taught me about the, uh, the ripple effect about crime and my crime and what it did to the, not just the victims, but the whole community as a whole. You know? I'm so, so sorry for that, for what I did. I, I didn't even know or understand the pain that I caused. And I think another one is uh, thinking for a change really stuck with me. It gave me negotiation skills, like when you're working with people, there's more than one way to do things. So you got to be able to negotiate with people. And it also taught me to get space, like if there's some kind of 
confrontation, like I'll just leave or walk away or avoid that. That those two things really stuck with me, and getting my high set that was really, really hard for me. I, I I hated school, but as I grew older, I had the opportunity uh, to work at the youth defender program here, and I worked for Mr. King, who always stresses the importance of education, and being around kids. It was hard for me to stress the importance of it because I didn't have it. And that helped me, that motivated me to get my uh, high set. So I accomplished a lot more than I ever thought I would. So those three things right there really stuck with me. Tell me, tell me how you're going to be able to stay sober if you get out. Well, I plan to attain meetings. Uh, AA, I'm going to lean on the parole project for uh, advice or people to contact. To, to get in meetings. I'm going to attend meetings. I have to. Uh, tell me why you think the meetings are important. Well, it just reminds me of what that life was, you know, and it helps me get through it. I'll be around more people that have experienced the same thing that I have experienced. How long do you think you'll have to go to this meeting? Probably forever. If I, I think I'll continue to do it. Now, you, your disciplinary record, uh, you haven't had a write-up since 2015? That's correct, sir. Gordon, what can you tell us about uh, Mr. Uh, Vizier? Uh, Mr. Mayor Bell, I can, Mr. Uh, let's see, Dwayne Vizier, I met him when he first arrived. He was tutoring, helping down there with the YOP program. We have a youthful offender program for the ones who are under the age of 18. And, I said, who is this fella here? And we got to talk. And so he spent his time down there trying to help them out, which meant a lot to me, you know, trying to, because he was 16, I believe, when he got uh, yes, in trouble himself when he was uh, arrested. Um, he's a pride member. Um, he is a, he's a trustee as well. So we have him as a, he's a trustee, a hobby shop owner. He's had different trusted positions throughout, but this one uh, currently is a hobby shop owner. But in, like, as you said, his disciplinary record, he stayed out of trouble since he's been here. So he's done a fine job. Uh, Mr. VJ, one other question. Uh, you're going to go to the parole project. What, what you hope to do once you leave the parole project? Well, I plan on being a carpenter. That's my first, that's my love. I love to do that. Um, I'm not going to be able to rest until I accomplish the things that I want to accomplish. Getting a vehicle, getting a house. And I'm from the country, so I like a lot of land. So I like to have a lot of land. And once I get that, I'm just going to work hard and I'm going to do all the good I possibly can. You know, I started this life off the wrong way and I plan on finishing it off right. Because my ultimate goal at the end of the day is to get to heaven, not just being free. So I got to continue to work on myself throughout the rest of my life. I, I think you're working your way towards heaven. I hope it's a long time before you get to heaven. Thank you very much. I hope so too. All right. Mr. Hudley? Uh, <clears throat> parole project uh, stands firmly behind Dwayne. Uh, we offer our residential reentry program to him. He will be uh, a long-term resident with our program until he becomes self-sufficient. Uh, <coughs> we have a lot of confidence in Dwayne, not just because of um, you know what Dwayne has shown during his incarceration, but uh, individuals like Dwayne uh, over the last few years. Uh, there are so many who have been once given life or virtual life sentences who have come home and have rebuilt their lives and are, and are doing very well. Uh, and we have confidence that Dwayne will grow that number. Uh, but just wanted to let the board know that we're uh, putting all our chips in on Dwayne. Uh, and we think that he'll make you proud if you give him a second chance. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Dwayne, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Yes, sir. I would like to uh, apologize to all my victims. I'm so, so sorry. You know, that's something I'm going to have to carry for the rest of my life. I will never be able to change that or fix that. And that I guarantee y'all, if y'all give me this opportunity, I will not let any of y'all die. I will be successful out there and I will serve society right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Like to wrap up? Yes. Thank you. 
I don't know if it's morning or afternoon, so I'm just going <laughs> to say good morning, members of the committee. My name is Mia Johnson, and I'm a third-year law student at LSU, um, and I'm a part of the parole and reentry clinic. I submitted a brief that you all should have already received in advance of this hearing, and I'm representing Mr. Vizier today, and um, Robert Lancaster is appearing via Zoom, and Jasmine Cole is here with me as well. I would just like to say that Mr. Vizier was convicted at the age of 16 as a juvenile whose brain hadn't fully developed. He has, since his incarceration, spent his time um, taking advantage of various programs to not only acknowledge his crime and how it affected his victim, himself, and his community, but he's also been able to get his education, um, and he's also got a certification in welding. So he has really taken advantage of the opportunities that he was awarded while he was incarcerated. He's been able to really take those programs and get the most out of them. As he mentioned, he's been victim impact, victim awareness, as well as thinking for a change. And not only did he participate in those programs, but he was able to gain skills that he will take with him for the rest of his life in order for him to be successful. Um, Mr. Vizier mentioned that he really enjoys carpentry, that's his passion, and he's been able to spend his time at Angola as well as at Dixon to take those skills and learn how to not only make money but also how to invest so that he can continue um, honing in on those skills and perfecting his craft because that is something that he's passionate about. Since he's been here, he's been able to also find his faith. And because of that faith, he will make sure that he's staying on the right path because he's made a, a commitment, not only to himself, but to God. So I would just ask that the committee grant Dwayne Vizier early release under any conditions that you all see fit. Thank you. I thank you. Better prepare to vote? Yes. Mr. Mayor Bell. Thank you. Mr. Vizier, uh, I appreciate uh, your comments. Uh, you've done uh, very well while you've been in prison and you came to prison as a 16 year old or uh, you're now a year old man uh you've obviously accomplished a lot of things uh i, I think you've got a good plan for your transition uh, you've taken a lot of good programs uh my vote today would be to grant your vote to the louisiana parole project uh and follow all of their recommendations uh, uh Especially, uh, you indicated in your AA meetings. I expect you to go to three AA meetings per week. Uh, and I'd also like you to do five hours of community service work after you've been out for about 60 or 90 days. I think you've got an excellent story. I think you can really help a lot of people out. So that would be my vote. Ms. Wise? Mrs. Dwayne, it was so good to hear you have your assessment that you were a father and how you have just transformed that. And you and you be able to help a lot of other kids identify. Uh because that's where Paula was end up at where you be. And you can do a lot of good there. I just appreciate the work you've done and who you are today. My vote is a grant as well, uh, under the same terms and conditions set by Mr. Mayor Bell. And um the added that you subject to random drug screens by P and D. Uh best wishes to you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, two votes to grant your parole. I'm also going to vote to grant your parole today with the same stipulation stated. Good work. You positive uh, remarks from the warden. Good work you've done. Positive institutional record. You'll report to the uh, parole project. You'll have NAA three times a week. You service five hours per month. Random drug screens. You understand stipulation? Yes, sir. Congratulations. Thanks, three votes to grant your parole being granted. Thank you, Nick. You did a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll adjourn at 1147, Tuesday 15. Thank you, Ward. We appreciate you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Well, I, <laughs> I think that was the right decision. He was locked up since the age of 16. Um, he had life, and then it's interesting to hear how it was commuted to, what, 50 years and 35, and now... He made parole, but anyone who gets locked up since the age of 16, um, that doesn't seem like um, no. fair. So I'm happy with the decision. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, 